morning. Welcome to Pilgrim Lutheran Church and School. We are so glad that you are here. This is going to be a very special Sunday as we celebrate the power of faith. Today, we are glad to welcome Pastor Kevin Massey as our guest preacher. Chaplain Massey serves as the Vice President of Mission and Spiritual Care at Advocate Aurora Health. He is an alumni of Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota, and he has also served as the ELCA churchwide offices as the Director of Domestic Disaster Response. He also lives in the neighborhood, um, and he is a member of Luther Memorial just down the street, and he is also fluent in Spanish. Uh, Pastor Mel Ma Massey, we are thrilled that you are here. We invite everyone to fill out the connection card inside your bulletin. Please let us know if we can pray for you and support you in your journey of faith. Please place the card in the offering tray. Thank you. We also invite you to a time of fellowship after the service where there will be coffee and treats downstairs. Um, we will now have a moment of silence for reflection. Take a deep breath and make yourselves at home. Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, renewal, and joy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. To you, O God, our hearts are open, to you all desires known. We come to you confessing our sins. Forgive us in your mercy and remember us in your love. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in justice and truth. For the sake of your goodness in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us with this world of its need, with a life that comes only from you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
I would like to invite um, any children forward that would like to join me for a time of a children's sermon up here. Is that mic on? I'll hold it right there. Okay. Good morning. Come on. My name's Kevin. I'm new. I'm kind of filling in for Pastor Christian, and it's really nice to be here with you all today. I love your church, by the way. It's such a beautiful place to be, and every time I've come here, I've always felt really welcomed. Now, I have a question. Do you have a favorite food that if you could eat it every single day, you would eat that? Anybody? What's your favorite food? If you could eat it every day, you would. What is it? Your what's it? Your mommy's kale salad. That's amazing. I love it. It's so good for you too. Anybody else? A favorite food? You could eat it every day if you could. You would eat it every day if you could. Anybody else? Yeah, yours. Honeydew. Honeydew. I like honeydew melons. You mean? Yeah. Oh, they're so good. I'm going to confess something to you, okay? I have one that I'd eat every day if I could, but I, I don't, okay? And it's not as healthy as you. It's French fries. I'm crazy about French fries. I'd eat them every day if I could, but I can't because you can't eat them every day. So we're going to hear in our, in our gospel today, Jesus is going to talk about saying, I am the bread of life. And, you know, you sometimes eat bread. In Jesus' time, bread represented the most basic, important food that you could have. If some people, if you had nothing else to eat in the whole day, you might have just a little piece of bread. And so bread meant something really important to Jesus. It just meant, it meant the, like, the, I'm, the, the, I'm the everything. And we're going to hear him talk about that. And an important place where we always get to experience Jesus is in the bread that we get when we come up for Holy Communion. And we're going to talk about that too. So when you come up for Holy Communion, you can always think about, like, this is the best thing that I could possibly have, even if I, could, I can't have it every day, but it's my favorite, favorite thing that I could ever, ever have. I mean, that is if I can't have mommy's kale salad, which that sounds amazing. I'm going to offer just a little prayer for, for your day today. God, please bless these young people. Give them a day of wonder and learning. We thank you for this church, and we ask you to be with us today. Amen. And I understand that you have a Sunday school teacher. Are, are they to go with the Sunday school teacher at this time? Okay. Thanks for coming up, everybody. The first reading is from Exodus chapter six chapter 16 verses 2 through 4 and 9 through 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if we had only died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covering the camp. And in the morning, there was a huge layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew, dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. 
and we will read the psalm uh, responsively. So God commanded the crowds above and opened the doors of heaven. Raining down. down. So mortals ate the bread of angels. God provided the God provided for them food enough. Raining down flesh upon them like dust and flying birds like the sands of the seas. So the people ate and they were filled, for God gave them what they craved. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit. Just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some would be prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints with the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming but speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped as each part, uh, it, while as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. I'm looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, 
that you believe in him who he has sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Would you please be seated? Dear sisters and brothers, grace to you and peace from our loving God and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's very nice to be with you all again here at Pilgrim Lutheran. I'm always pleased to receive this kind invitation. So nice to be with you all. I need to mention that I, um, I had a detached retina in this left eye a little while back, and it is healing, but the, the two eyes don't work together right now very well, which means... I, you may see me lose my place both in the sermon or, or presiding at the, at the altar, and it's just going to kind of be the way, the way it is. So be, please be, uh, be patient with me on that, on that point. Have you ever heard the phrase, I'm just not feeling it? Yeah, I'm just not feeling it. It, it kind of means, you know, you're not into something, right? Like it's not, it's not resonating with you. It could be anything. It could be maybe somebody brings an idea and you go, I'm just not feeling it. Or it could be somebody says, hey, listen to this great new song. And you listen, you go, yeah, I'm just, I'm just not feeling it. Whatever it is, you know, I'm not feeling it. it. It just means you're not getting any energy from it. It's just not your, it's not your thing right now. I can tell you that that can happen to church as well. Okay? And I'm, I'm, I can only speak for myself. Okay? But I can tell you that there are Sundays when I go to church and I feel like I'm just going through the motions. Like I'm just, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not feeling it, okay? I'm not getting anything out of it. I'm just, I feel like I'm just kind of going through the motions. No, not always, okay, not always. There are times when I am feeling it. I feel the energy, I feel close to God. I am enriched, inspired by the presence of the people that I'm with. It's just an amazing experience. Music does it for me so much. Church music, I love church music. I love organ music, maybe the most of all. And I can be just feel like I'm in the presence of God. And it might be the very next Sunday, I'm not feeling it. Because I'm a human being. And that's just normal for us. Sometimes we feel something like the presence of God, and sometimes we don't. Now, I believe that is the reason why Jesus gave us some very, very specific promises about where we can find him, whether we are feeling it or not. And one of those is in our, our gospel reading today. In the gospel reading here in, in John chapter 6, he talks profoundly about being the bread of life. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. These words are a deep assurance of Jesus' presence in our lives. And very specifically, when we come to this altar and when we receive that sacrament, he has promised us that his presence is there. We don't understand it. We don't know why or how. You know, back in the Middle Ages, people used to argue about what it meant. We don't do that anymore. But what we know is this. When we go to this sacrament, Jesus is actually there for us, whether we feel it or not. You don't have to feel it. 
You don't have to like have some special experience of holiness every time you come to communion. Sometimes you're gonna, by the way. Sometimes you're gonna, but not always. If it just sometimes feels like you're going through the motions, that's fine. But Jesus is the one who has promised that going through the motions or not, I do promise you that I'm there. So it is, it is an amazing thing that he does that for us. But wait, there's more. He actually continues to promise us more ways like that. So another thing that Jesus promised very specifically, Matthew chapter 18, 20, Jesus says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So, by, by the way, you know, we don't need to have very many people in church. This is a very nice turnout for a, sun, for a summer Sunday, by the way. But we don't need very many people in church for Jesus to be present. And that's the really interesting part of that promise. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So, remember, it says two or three. That means two. It says two. So, that also is a very important promise. So when I come to church, sometimes I feel like this is the presence of God. This is, this is God's gathered community. I feel it. And sometimes I don't. And Jesus' promise on that point is, it doesn't matter whether you feel it or not, Kevin, because I promise you where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the, in the midst of you. That means in this faith journey, you don't have to actually feel the faith every day. Other people may be feeling it for you. And that's the reason why we show up and come and gather. And it's an, it's an important thing. But wait, there's more. Jesus actually promises us another way. That when, whether we feel it or not, he promises, I'm going to be there. Jesus says, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. And the people said, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or, or naked, or, or, or sick, or in prison, and, 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 and did not take care of you? He says, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are the members of my family, you did that to me. So Jesus promises us very, very specifically that when we do acts of kindness and service to anybody in need, we encounter Jesus. Whether we feel it or not, whether we know it or not, the people in Jesus' story didn't know it. They didn't recognize it, but it didn't matter because Jesus was actually there for them. So, are you feeling it today? It doesn't matter. It, if, it, if you're feeling it, great. If you're not feeling it today, it doesn't matter because Jesus has promised us that in reality, all three of these are happening right now in this, in this gathering that we're going to be doing today. These three things. We're going to celebrate Holy Communion today. And Jesus is going to be present with us. We've already got two or three gathered in Jesus' name today. And that means he's here in, the, in, the, in, the, um, in, in our, our midst. The way. You all welcomed me when I walked in your door today. Do you know how many of you actually said the word welcome to me, by the way? One of you went and got me some water. One of you, one of you showed me things about where the church was. You already did this in your own gathering today. All three. Whether you, whether, whether you feel it or not. Now it's normal to feel sometimes that Jesus is not present. But those feelings do not mean that we are abandoned. Rather, these are, these are invitations that we can seek Jesus where we know and where he has promised to be found. In communion, we receive him, his real presence. Just by gathering together today, we find him among us. And in serving each other, as perhaps somebody is going to serve somebody a cup of coffee downstairs later on, we actually see his face. 
Let us go forth into the, this beginning of, of this new week that is happening. We never know what's going to happen in the week to come. But as we go forward, we go forward knowing that in three important ways, we actually encountered Jesus today. Whether we, whether we knew it or not, whether we feel it or not. Jesus is always with us. He's always guiding us, always loving us. When we feel his presence and when we don't, his promise is steadfast that we are never alone. Amen. Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. O living bread, whoever comes to you will never be hungry. Fill us with your living presence. Heal our hurts and divisions. Unite us around your table of love and mission. Merciful God. Holy God of all creation, you are the source of all life. You have made such a beautiful and intricate world. Guide us in slowly, in slowing down the destruction of the delicate ecosystems. Provide for farmers who depend on the land for their daily bread. Merciful God. Yes. Compassionate God, you invite us to draw near to you. Send your healing presence among all those who are sick and in need of care, especially Brooke and Trent Barclay, the Bensinger family, Jim Berry Sr., 
Va Valerie Carlson, Sue Couch, Lisa Cuff, Yolanda Davis, Ron DeRobertus, Dale Halter, Wayne Heinz, Judy Keene, Carol Langseth, Kristen Masser, Hernan Medina, Joyce McGinnis, Millie Ostrander, Norma Phillips, Marie Shaw, Renee Studeman. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Unto you we command all for whom we pray, trusting in your heavenly provision. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share the peace with one another. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what's sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be received here, your body, the life of the world. Amen.
right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, who invites us to the table to celebrate our common hunger for the bread of life, so that all may be filled and empowered with your liberating love. And so with the church and the hosts of heaven and with the saints of every time and place, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now let us pray together the prayer that our Lord Jesus himself teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to do temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Would you please be seated? And just a reminder, this is not Pilgrim's table. This is not a Lutheran table. This is the Lord's table, and the Lord is inviting all of us to this banquet. If by chance you are visiting from another, another tradition, if you are accustomed to receiving communion in another faith community, you are welcome to receive it among us, among us today. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Amen.
Now may the living presence of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Okay, um, is there anyone who has any announcements uh, that maybe didn't get put in? Any announcements? Okay. Uh, first of all, we'd like to thank Pastor Massey for coming, and what a wonderful um, service. So thank you so much. Um, the only other announcement that I really have is that the Back to School Barbecue will be on Wednesday, August 21st. Um, so if you would like to join in with that, please watch for the announcements and an opportunity to sign up. But everyone is welcome uh, to the Back to School Barbecue on Wednesday, August 21st. Um, other than that, we just ask you to please join us downstairs for some uh, fellowship coffee and treats. And um, with that, I think we're all set. Mm -hmm.